Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an overview, and some benchmarks on this new video card from Galaxy. This is the Galaxy NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 and this is the GC Overclocked Edition. We'll start off with a closer look at the retail box. This is a 2 gigabyte frame buffer version and the memory does uh, run at 192 bit interface. It is GDDR5 memory, 2 gigabytes or 2048 megabytes. Uh, runs at 1502 megahertz or 6008 megahertz effective memory clock, which is the same memory speed that we saw uh, with the 600 series all the way up to the 680. So very nice to have. The only thing you get uh, by comparison here is 192 bit interface versus the 256 bit interface. You get a three-year extended warranty from Galaxy with this video card, if purchased in the United States, of course. Uh, you also get the GC, factory overclock version. I asked what GC stands for because I wasn't quite sure. It stands for Galaxy Clocked. Makes sense. You also get a force air bracket. They've extended, uh, made, made wider the holes on the back of the PCI bracket uh, to provide it for a little bit extra airflow out there. You get a customized cooling solution on here, which I can verify works quite well. Uh, you can also support up to four monitors from a single video card here. Uh, you get support for NVIDIA's higher end stuff with the 600 series, of course, DirectX 11, physics support, 3D vision support. Uh, some more information here on the back. So uh, if you're into Galaxy, well, here's some more information about Galaxy in general, why it makes sense to purchase a Galaxy card. And uh, I'm pretty much going to leave it at that if you guys want to take a closer look at the info here. And I'm going to go ahead and start looking at the accessories. Taking a look inside the box here, we have, well, we have the video card itself, of course. We have a little note from Galaxy saying, hey, if you do have any issues with this card, Galaxy would like to work directly with you, so they have their contact information there. We also get uh, a little pouch here, like here, which should have some accessories in it. Okay, I got it. Sorry, there's some origami-like folding going on here. As far as accessories goes, you get a DVI to VGA adapter, so if you're using an older monitor with a VGA connection, analog RGB, uh, then you can use this adapter for it. Uh, bear in mind this will only work with one of the two DVI outs on the back of the card. I'll point out to you guys which of those that is. You also get a power adapter here with two Molex plugs going into a 6-pin PCI Express power connector. Uh, there is only a single 6-pin PCI Express power connector on the video card and uh, NVIDIA and Galaxy are recommending at minimum a 450 watt power supply. Now if your power supply doesn't have this 6-pin PCI Express power connector, you can use this, but you do want at least 450 watts. And uh, there's actually one more spec on the box I wanted to point out. 450 watts uh, with a minimum 12 volt current rating of 24 amps on the rail that uh, you're going to this power, this connector with. So bear that in mind and uh, make sure you always get a decent power supply because, well, good power supplies are they're really nice. Anyway, uh, you also get the Galaxy graphics card driver and software disk. You also get the Extreme Tuner Plus software from Galaxy, so you can use that for overclocking. Uh, it's best to download the latest drivers from the NVIDIA website uh, if you do purchase this card because chances are there's newer ones there than are available on the disk. You get this setup guide. Easy steps for quick installation. Just fold this out and take a look at it because I don't think I've seen this one before. There you have it, a nice visual walkthrough, a uh, step-by-step guide for installing this in your computer. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer series on Newegg TV because that's also useful. You also get the GTX series user's manual with some more information about the video card as well as the installation of the software. Uh, let's take a look at the card itself. I'm going to start off with a measurement here, just so you guys can get an idea of if this card will fit into your case. It should fit in most cases, as you can see down there towards the end. It is short of 10 inches. I'm going to say it's about 9 and 3 quarters, uh, so make sure you have enough space in your case for the video card, as well as a little bit of space around it for some air to exhaust, of course. Uh, take a look at the card itself. We can see a gray uh, shroud over here, although it is an open air cooling design. We have a couple fans right there, which uh, I'm also going to do a quick measurement on. Quick being the operative word. Looks like, uh, ooh, I'd say 85 millimeter fans going on right here for this card. So two 85 millimeter fans are directing air downwards towards this stack of aluminum fins that you can sort of see peeking through the side right there. They also have some heat pipes which are visible from this side. So you have a total of three heat pipes going from the GPU area right there at the center. Basically those are going to be delivering heat outward into the uh, the array of aluminum fins out there. And then of course the air flowing from the fans right here blowing over those and keeping those nice and cool. Also down here at this end 
you can see, since this is a custom-designed uh, PCB as well as cooling solution uh, from Galaxy, they also have put a little stack of uh, aluminum fins on top of the power delivery right there, so that's on top of the MOSFETs. And that's going to be keeping your power delivery a little bit cooler, which is especially key if you're going to be overclocking, but also for features uh, for this video card, such as uh, GPU boost, because uh, the 600 series of cards will give itself sort of an automatic overclock, uh, but it does need to stay within a thermal parameter, so uh, make sure you keep your case airflow uh, nice and smooth, and uh, make sure you keep your cables tied down, and make sure you clean out your dust filters, so you make sure you get plenty of airflow to this card. Keep the temperatures down. And then that will in turn make sure that you can make use of that uh, GPU boost clock feature. Uh, speaking of it, uh, the reference GTX 660 GPU uh, core clock and boost clock is 980 slash 1033. Uh, for this card, it's 1006 slash 1072. So that's the manufacturer overclocked from the GC or Galaxy clocked edition of this card. Uh, and then this particular card, since I've already ran it through some benchmarks, hit 1097.4 megahertz uh, max boost clock, and it was able to maintain that over time, as long, as, again, as it stayed within, uh, within a temperature range. And uh, speaking of temperatures, I can also say that this cooler has been quite effective in our testing. In fact, amidst all the tests, I did uh, never got past 60 degrees Celsius. Uh, bear in mind that we are using an open-air test bed, uh, which does, <clears throat> in my experience, tend to favor the open air cooling designs a little bit more, uh, but 58 degrees Celsius even under full load is, well, really, really chilly for a video card. So uh, that's a testament to the cooling solution as well as to the efficiency of the Kepler architecture in there. And uh, the GK106 GPU that's in here uh, definitely is running a little bit cooler than the GK104, and that's simply because it's running a little bit uh, less clock speeds, uh, give or take, and uh, also fewer SMX units. Just taking a look at this end, you can see that uh, you do have a little bit of open air space down there for the uh, air to flow out. Here's a look at the bottom of the PCB, again, custom design. Uh, you got sort of a turquoise PCB and the gray heat shroud. Down here at this end, you can see the PCI Express connector. Again, PCI Express Gen 3 compatible with the 600 series. Uh, as well as this card, you get uh, increased bandwidth and efficiency with PCI Express Gen 3, but it is backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2. You have a single SLI finger up here at the top. You can run these cards in two-way SLI. Uh, and if you do want to see some SLI benchmarks, you can check out our YouTube channel uh, because we are going to be posting some SLI benchmarks with the 660 as well as a comparison of a 660 SLI versus the 680. Uh, now here at the end, you can see your video outs. Uh, you get four of those. Again, you can actually plug in all four of these and run up to four monitors. You can use three of them for gaming, and the fourth is a companion display. So your two DVI outs right there, both dual links. So if you have a higher high res monitor and a dual link DVI cable, you can run up to 2560 by 1600 resolution. The top one here is digital only. Bottom one is uh, digital plus analog. So if you're going to use that DVI to VGA adapter, use it on the lower one right there. You also have an HDMI out and a display port out, and then both of these will support video as well as audio outputs. Uh, also down here on the bracket, you can see that uh, Galaxy has sort of redesigned the bracket a little bit to provide just as much space as possible, given the space possible, it's not taken up by the video outs, to provide some extra airflow going out the back of the card, uh, just again to keep uh, temperatures down, and uh, that has seemed to be pretty effective, at least in the testing that I've done so far. Uh, so again, the GPU here is GK106, it's built on the 28 nanometer manufacturing process from uh, NVIDIA. It is a smaller die than the GK104 that's used in the uh, 670 and 680, of course. Uh, die size is 221 square millimeters. You get 960 CUDA cores by way of five SMX units or streaming multiprocessor. Uh, streaming multiprocessors, which are kind of the blocks that the uh, Kepler architecture is built on. You also get 24 raster units, and uh, that's about it for stats for this card. I did want to go into our benchmarks now. Our benchmarking test bed is an Intel uh, Core i5-3570K processor. We're on a Z77 test bed. Uh, we're running 8 gigs of uh, DDR3 memory. Bear in mind the memory is running pretty fast. It's 2666, but other than that, everything's uh, also running at uh, stock speed. So this should be a pretty popular configuration. And uh, here are your benchmarks. <laughs>
And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the Galaxy GeForce GTX 660 GC Overclocked Edition. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel for more just like it. Uh, you can also find our GTX 660 full benchmarks video as well as comparisons, as well as our SLI video over there. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.